Welcome to a discussion of how the direction of a nerve impulse is accomplished and how a nerve impulse is generated. Now previously we've worked with this particular model in which we had a section of a membrane. And this is quite a small section actually. If we shrink that down to our actual neuron, now we see an actual neuron here. It's quite long. Here's the axon and I know that's the axon because if the nerve impulse is traveling from left until right then it's moving away from the cell body in which case these must be dendrites and this here must be a cell body and then this is an axon. So this is a nice diagram of a neuron. We have here our, our old axon and if we shrunk it down to actual size it would be really small and maybe would fit there. In fact, it would probably be a little bit smaller. And then we would have lots of them. And we would stick them along in a row. However, this would be a little confusing. I'd have to show a lot of little sodium atoms going back and forth and over the whole length, and that would just take way too much time. So we're going to simplify our previous model a bit. First of all, let's just get rid of those. And instead of using that, we'll just say, okay, here's our, here's our membrane, and we're going to hold it over top. Or actually, we'll put it underneath here. And then this will represent, this is our neuron, and so that's going to represent the place in the neuron as the signal is coming down. This is going to be a little bit of an expansion, so this is the inside, the axoplasm, and this is the outside. Rather than showing everything that's going on with the sodium and potassium channels, we'll just represent and we'll say, okay, the inside is negative, and the outside is positive, and we will just assume that you know what's going on from the previous videos. Uh, we will refer to them, um, but we're just going to show what's happening with the charges. So let's set that up now. Okay, I've now got it set up. This area of the, of the diagram is going to represent this area of the neuron, and what happens is the nerve impulse moves from left to right. The entire thing is at its resting potential with positive on the outside, and negative on the inside. Now let's say we get an action potential coming along, it's been moving, and it starts off. So the first thing that happens with an action potential is depolarization. So this is no longer at a, rest, at a resting potential, we'll move that out of our way. Uh, depolarization, the inside becomes positive and the outside becomes negative. So this action potential is moving along. Now what happens is th this depolarization, the influx of sodium ions, destabilizes the membrane and that change in potential causes a depolarization event to happen at the membrane next to it, right here. So that will cause this to depolarize. Now as this has depolarized, this section of the membrane has undergone repolarization. And so the charges are back to being the way they were. So the action potential has moved along. Now, the depolarization of this section of the membrane will cause the depolarization of the next section of the membrane, and the charges reverse. This will undergo repolarization, like that. And now this area is now in the refractory period as the ion charges are being put back to the way they were, so that our sodium is going back to being uh, where it's supposed to be, and the potassium is going back to where it's supposed to be. Now again, the depolarization here causes depolarization next to it. So it moves along one. This undergoes repolarization. This is now in the refractory period, and this area is now back at the resting potential. This one depolarizes. This one repolarizes. This one's now in the refractory period, and this one's at the resting potential. Now notice, as this moves across, the depolarization of the action potential is followed by the repolarization of the action potential, which is followed by a refractory period. So each section behind it is in the refractory period so that it cannot generate another nerve impulse, so that the resting potential behind it is now can refire, but because this area cannot fire again, the depolarization here doesn't cause another depolarization event behind it. That way it keeps moving forward. It just depolarizes the area of the membrane next to it. That now is undergoing depolarization. This one will undergo repolarization. Now this is the refractory period and then the resting potential is falling along. And it will continue moving that way until it gets down here 
to the axon terminals where something different will happen in order to jump from one membrane to the other. So this is how the action potential moves down an axon or a dendrite. The depolarization event in one spot causes the area of the membrane next to it to depolarize. No longer resting potential there. And that's how a nerve impulse is generated. Out a nerve impulse moves.